This is the Echelon Connect EX4S and I bought it at Costco for a thousand bucks because you guys asked me to do it in the comment section. And if you appreciate me buying this bike to review it, give me a thumbs up because I drove six hours round trip to go find this thing. I've been calling Costco's the past two days, can't find it anywhere around here. Also, if you're watching this video far into the future after the time I publish this, check a link like up here or down in the description box to see if I have a full review on this bike or any other comparison videos with the Echelon EX4S. Welcome to the family. Dude, I am already so part of the family. I've got the Echelon EX4S completely built and I'm about to get on it and give you my very first impressions of this bike. And in the next few days here, um, I'm gonna be comparing this bike to the Echelon Connect, the $500 version over there, as well as the other Sam's Club bike, the Proform bike right there. And I will be doing a head-to-head -head comparison against the Peloton Bike Plus right there as well. So if you wanna see any of that stuff, as well as a full in-depth review of the Echelon EX4S, be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. Also, while I'm going through this boring stuff, uh, give me a thumbs up if you find this information beneficial and any questions or comments you have, please leave down in the comment section below this video. So let me tell you my first impressions of the touchscreen. It's uh, snappy, it's got a very high resolution, it looks nice. Let's go ahead and pull this uh, plastic wrap off of it right now. So it is actually a really good looking screen. Um, the resolution is nice. And like I said, the touch screen works nicely. It responds quickly. Um, you know, it can scroll through the classes here nicely. And you know, it works just how you'd expect it to work. However, before I get into the software too much, really what I wanna do is get on this bike and see how it feels to me, uh, what my very first impressions are of this thing. You know, what is the resistance knob like? How does that flywheel feel? Um, so I know on the Echelon Connect over there, it takes like 32 turns to get from minimum resistance to maximum resistance. So, you know, let's get on here and just see how it performs and I'll give you my first thoughts. So I have the seat on maximum height. The handlebars are also on maximum height. Um, and as I mentioned before, they don't go forwards and backwards, so they're locked in place. I'm just gonna use my normal tennis shoes and I'm gonna use the cage style pedals for my very first ride. So let's take a quick look at the uh, resistance knob. First of all, very similar in appearance to the Echelon Connect, the $500 one over there. However, this one uh, has like a little click between uh, resistances. And then also the big difference is the whole thing pushes down like this for the stop. So we gotta figure out how to work this thing. So let's get on and see what it feels like and what the minimum and maximum resistance is. And uh, let me give you my very first unfiltered thoughts on this bike. All right, so we got the cages, I adjusted them to fit my large uh, size 14 shoe. That one's a little snug there, I need to fix it real quick. Okay, got the cages situated uh, for me. Uh, first impressions, uh, seat on maximum height is definitely higher than the uh, $500 Echelon Connect. So I'm six foot five, I normally wear a size 34 inseam, like in a pair of jeans or something. And I feel like I do get the proper leg extension. So, um, Next, next thing, you know, I feel the seat. The, the, the seat feels fine, you know. It's, it's a little bit squishy. Uh, I don't really dislike it. It's fine. Leaning on up here onto the handlebars, let's see how this feels. So hand grip positions, they seem fine, you know. I kind of wish this was flat across, honestly. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's close enough to flat. Like I mentioned before, the uh, grip is a little bit narrower diameter than a lot of these other bikes. So I do prefer a thicker grip. Um, the tubing on this isn't quite as thick as uh, most bikes I have here. However, there are a variety of hand positions you can get out here um, when you're out of the saddle. It looks like, you know, standard traditional uh, riding positions for the hands. Looks like there is a small spot here to put your hand um, for this position which is a little bit small, you know, I'd be a little happier if that was a little bit bigger for my hand, but you know, it works. As far as the material though, you know, it's like a rubberized coating, good material. Another thing I'm noticing is it has this uh, flashing blue light, which is exactly the same thing you see over there on the $500 Echelon Connect. All right, let me play with the resistance knob here. So I'm gonna turn it down. 
Actually, let's see what kind of metrics we can get on the screen. So I just clicked on the more tab down here and I'm just gonna choose freestyle because I don't wanna join a class yet. If you wanna see classes, um, check out um, my videos, my other videos. So it says I'm disconnected. Select bike, okay. So, so apparently you have to connect to your bike, which it did. All right, cool. So right up here on the screen, we get our metrics. There's cadence, resistance, and power output measured in watts. Also, there's some other stuff down there, but let's check out the resistance for one, because I'm really, I wanna know about the resistance. So I'm pedaling right now on resistance one, and you know, feels like resistance one. It's uh, very light, easy. Nice and smooth, shows me my cadence up there and my power output. So we can see cadence 62, 64, resistance one, power output is 21. Let me crank it up. Okay, 120. So hey, this flywheel feels smooth uh, right away. Resistance one here, first impressions. This feels like a nice machine, honestly. Um, first impressions, definitely feels like a nicer bike than the Echelon Connect, the $500 one right there. Also, it's really, really quiet right now. This is very first impressions. You know, resistance one, this is my first time on the bike, pedaling at cadence 81. So I stopped pedaling for a moment so you can take a look at the metrics. It shows you your max cadence. So my max so far was 120. It shows you your uh, average and max resistance as well as your max power output and average. Um, one thing I am noticing with this bike is there is a little bit of a lag um, in the output. So right now I'm pedaling and I'm gonna stop pedaling and I'll tell you when I stop and you can just, you'll be able to see the lag I'm talking about. So um, when I say stop, I'll stop pedaling, okay? Stop. So there, yeah, there's a little bit of a lag there. Um, however, I will say, I definitely noticed when I tried to stop that flywheel, just stop pedaling, um, the inertia from the flywheel, it just like was really pulling through. So I can tell that this is like, a quality drivetrain on this bike. Like the drivetrain and flywheel on this bike, I can tell right off the bat, is uh, better for sure than the $500 Echelon Connect over there. And we'll have to see how it stacks up to you, like the $900 Schwinn IC4 and the Proform bike, but that's for another video. So for now, let's start adding on some resistance because I just want to see how this feels and like kind of what the max resistance feels like right away, first impression. So I'm just gonna give it a crank. Okay, so that sounds like a, a digital motor moved those magnets. I heard the motor working. That, that little flick of the wrist there moved it up to resistance level six. Um, so let me go ahead and just, you know, I, I feel the resistance definitely came on there a little bit for sure. Uh, but you know, I wanna give it another crank. So that moved me to nine, 12, um, not honestly really feeling a huge difference right away here. That bumped me to 18. Definitely feel quite, quite a big difference now in resistance. Resistance is 20. Oh yeah, resistance is coming on for sure now. Um, so like I said, be sure to subscribe and watch my future videos. Also, I might already have those videos posted. So maybe look around here or here. I might have something pop up on the screen or down in the description box to see because I'm gonna have a lot more in-depth and closer look at this bike for sure. More videos on this. So resistance 20, you know, feels like decent amount of resistance. I think the max is 32. So let's crank it up some more. Ooh, that's 27. Oh yeah, so this bike seems like it has a pretty good max resistance. 32, max. What is the verdict? It's heavy. It's definitely heavy. 
I'm gonna have to get, come back for another video. I don't wanna really comment on max resistance too closely right now. Um, I am in the saddle and I am pedaling. It is a heavy max resistance. Let me get out. Interesting, okay. No comment on max resistance for now. You're gonna have to subscribe and come back and watch my next video because I'm gonna compare it to the Peloton Bike Plus, which is my reference for max resistance, basically. That bike, Peloton Bike Plus, has a really, really good quality, high max resistance. Echelon Connect doesn't have the greatest max resistance. I'm gonna have to compare these two tomorrow. Echelon Connect $500, First Echelon EX4S. And also take a look at the max resistance on these other bikes compared to this. That being said, I'm cranking it down a little bit. Um, first impressions of this bike though, definitely has, let me get down here and show you. So here's the flywheel. I'm gonna turn the resistance knob and listen to the motor. So there's a digital magnetic resistance in there. So that kind of brings up the question, is there automatic adjusting resistance in classes with Echelon? I don't know the answer to that, but it seems like technically that might be possible. You know, if, that, if they have that motor in there adjusting the resistance on the spike, I don't know the answer at this point. Again, subscribe and we'll find out tomorrow. Honestly guys, I'm worn out. You know, I did a six hour round trip drive to go find this bike over in the Central Valley. They don't have it anywhere around where I live. I'm kind of wore out. Um, so subscribe and be sure to look for my next videos coming out about the Echelon EX4 because I'm going to compare it to that $385 Proform bike from Costco, the very similarly priced Schwinn IC4, and all these other bikes. Anyway guys, if you found any value in this video, please give me a thumbs up. Any questions or comments you have, leave down in the comment section so you can give me ideas and stuff for my next video on this bike. What do you wanna see? What do you wanna know? What do you want me to show you? And I will be making many more videos. Thanks for watching. That's all I have for you today and I'll see you in my next video.